Okay, so fairy tale romances, right? <laughs> They don't exactly come with a how-to manual for the real world, do they? Not at all. And that's what we're diving into today, dishing those happily ever after fantasies and getting real about what makes relationships last. We're cracking open Couple Coaching 2.0 by David Wilchfort. And let me tell you, this isn't your typical relationship advice. Oh, so no tired old cliches or those generic tips we've all heard a million times. Nope. This is about real deal insights from a therapist who's seen it all. And he doesn't shy away from tackling those common relationship myths head on, like the idea that the honeymoon phase has to end. Hold on. Wait, are you saying those butterflies we feel at the beginning that don't have to disappear? Tell me more. Think of it this way. Remember those amazing first blooms in a garden? Just because they fade, it doesn't mean the garden's done for, right? With a little love, a little attention, you can keep nurturing those plants and even grow some brand new blooms. Relationships, they're kind of the same way. That first spark, it might change over time, but those feelings of love and excitement, you can absolutely keep them alive. I love that analogy. Yeah. So much more hopeful than just accepting that the spark is doomed to fade. Huh. And you know, that leads us to another big misconception. This whole finding the one thing, this idea of the perfect partner, it trips so many people up. Oh, yeah, I've totally fallen for that one myself. You get caught up thinking, if only I could find that missing piece of the puzzle. It's tempting, right? But there's a way more empowering way to think about it. It's less about finding that perfect someone and way more about being a better partner yourself. It's about growing those skills, those qualities that make you someone amazing to build a life with. Now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That puts the power right back in our own hands. Mm. So instead of hunting for a soulmate, yeah. we should be leveling up our own what soulmate skills. What are some of those essential skills? You know, the ones that really make or break a relationship. One of the biggest ones is understanding how much power there is in perspective. We all have these blind spots, especially in relationships. It's easy to see our own hurts, our own experiences more clearly than our partners. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like we get so stuck in our own heads. Yeah. We've got our partner. They've got their own whole world going on in there, oh, too. Exactly. What Wiltfort uses this great example. Imagine someone goes online, right? They're posting about some relationship issue, desperate for advice because their partner did something hurtful. Everyone jumps in with their two cents, but we're only ever getting one side of the story, right? We don't hear the partner's perspective or what even led up to that whole situation. Oh my gosh, it's like every relationship forum ever. Everyone's so quick to judge based on like a tiny snippet of information. Exactly, and that's the crucial thing to remember. In any relationship, there are always multiple perspectives. Just because we experience something a certain way doesn't mean our partner does. We all see the world through these totally unique lenses, shaped by all the stuff we've been through, the things we believe. It's like that optical illusion thing, you know, where one person sees a vase and the other one sees two faces. Same exact image, but they're seeing it in completely different ways. Absolutely. And in relationships, that difference, that's key. Instead of expecting your partner to see the world exactly like you do, the real goal is to understand and respect their point of view, even or maybe especially when you don't agree. So true. It's easy to forget our partners can't read our minds. Yeah. Right? Like they should just automatically know what we're thinking or how we're feeling. Totally. And then when uh. they don't react the way we expect, it can feel so personal, you know? But what if, and stay with me here, but what if most of the time those hurtful actions, they weren't even done on purpose? Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Sometimes we say or do things and we totally don't realize how it's going to land on the other person. Yeah. But well, like, there's got to be times when people are intentionally trying to be hurtful, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And we're definitely not excusing any actually harmful behavior. But Wiltford's point is this. Most of us, we don't want to hurt the people we love. And to get this across, he uses this, well, kind of awkward analogy. Oh, I'm a sucker for a good analogy. Hit me with it. Okay, so picture this. You and your partner are both blindfolded, and you're accidentally standing on each other's feet. Ow, ow. Okay, I can already feel that, just imagining it. Right, so you're both in pain, so naturally you both start shifting around, trying to get off that foot, take the pressure off. Makes sense. But here's the thing. Every time one of you moves to try and ease your own pain, you're actually, without realizing it, causing more pain to the other person. Oh. And it's not until, you know, the... Well, blindfolds come off, you see the look on their face that you realize, oh, I've actually been making things worse this whole time, even though I never meant to. Wow. Okay. That is a powerful image. It's like we get so focused on our own experience, our own pain, 
that we're totally blind to how our actions, even well-intentioned ones, are landing on the other person. Like you said, it's that blindfold coming off, being able to see things from their side that really shifts things. Exactly. And that is exactly why shifting away from blame, from that who did what to whom, and moving towards understanding, it's crucial. Instead of getting stuck in that cycle of hurt and blame, we want to focus on communication, on actually getting where the other person is coming from and finding ways to move forward together. So breaking out of that blame cycle and choosing to get each other's experiences instead, that's the key. That's the one. And Wilchfort, he talks about this danger of what he calls return tickets. It's that thing we do where we keep digging up past hurts, keep using them against each other like some trump card in an argument. He says it's like driving through life with your eyes glued to the rearview mirror. Ooh, that is a good one. <laughs> You're so busy looking back, you miss what's right in front of you, and then bam. You're headed straight for a crash. Exactly. Dwelling on those old hurts, it's like it blocks you from moving forward, from actually building a better future together. It's important to address the issues, obviously learn from them, but then as much as you can, you got to let them go, right? What's done is done. And the only part you have any control over is how you move forward from this point on. Yeah, makes sense. It's so easy to get sucked into those cycles of resentment and bringing up the past. But it sounds like breaking free from that is crucial for a relationship to actually become healthier. So how do we shift gears then? How do we go from looking back to actually moving forward in a more positive direction? Give us some practical tips here. What are some things couples can do to build a stronger bond? Wilchfort, he's all about those small, consistent actions, the ones that add up to big change over time. One of his simplest but most powerful suggestions is this thing he calls the one by one of love. One by one of love. Okay, now I'm really curious. What is that? It does sound pretty simple, right? But I can see how taking even a minute each day just to think about the good stuff, it could really make a difference. Like you said, watering the flowers instead of obsessing over the weeds. Exactly. And you know what makes it even more powerful? Wilchfort. He encourages couples to actually share those little moments of appreciation with each other. Imagine, like, making it a weekly thing. You sit down and you actually tell your partner those things you notice, those little gestures, those qualities, you know, the things that made you feel loved, appreciated, all that good stuff. I love that it's like creating this shared memory bank of all the positive things, a little reminder of all the good that's happening, especially when things get crazy and stressful. You know, it goes. It's like intentionally shifting your focus, right? From what's missing to what's actually right there in front of you. And that actually leads into another practical tool Wilchfort talks about. He calls them reverse compliments. Reverse compliments. Okay, that's a new one. How's that work? It's about kind of flipping the script on criticism, you know? So instead of focusing on what your partner didn't do, you make it a point to acknowledge, to appreciate the effort they did make, even if it seems small. So instead of, ugh, you never empty the dishwasher, it's more like, hey, thanks for tidying up the living room. It really makes a difference. You got it. It's about acknowledging those efforts, validating them, even the little ones. And over time, those small expressions of appreciation, they build up, you know? Mm. They create a much more positive, loving vibe in the relationship. Makes sense, right? I mean, we all want to feel appreciated, don't we? It's so easy to get discouraged when all you hear about is what you're doing wrong. But when someone acknowledges your effort, even in small ways, it makes you want to step up even more. 100%. Think about it like this at work. If you were constantly getting criticized, would you really feel motivated to go above and beyond? Probably not. But what if your boss noticed your hard work? They appreciated your contributions. You'd probably feel way more fired up to keep showing up, right? Relationships, yeah. same deal. That is so true. Criticism, it just makes you want to get defensive. But mm -hmm. appreciation, that's what builds connection. That's how we grow. Right. So instead of focusing on our partner's flaws, it's about celebrating their strengths, noticing and acknowledging the effort they're putting in. Exactly. It doesn't mean ignoring problems or pretending everything's perfect. It's about creating this foundation of love, of appreciation, so that when challenges do come up, you can face them as a team. So basically what we're talking about is ditching those fairy tale expectations, getting real about how different our perspectives are, and then focusing on those small, consistent things, those little acts of love and appreciation. Those are the things that really build a lasting bond. It's about choosing to see the best in each other, even when it's hard. I love that. And remember, just like that garden we were talking about, building a fulfilling relationship, it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes that willingness to adapt, to grow together. And that's a perfect point to wrap things up. Today, we really dug into some seriously valuable advice about letting go of those relationship cliches and really homing in on what truly makes love last. 
We talked about how it's not about finding that perfect person, but about showing up as our best selves day in and day out. It's about understanding instead of blaming, appreciating instead of criticizing, and remembering that even the tiniest gestures can make a world of difference in our relationships. And sometimes the most powerful thing we can do is hit that rewind button, you know? Think back to what was working in those early days of the relationship, those little acts of love, those moments of connection that just seemed to happen so effortlessly when everything was new and exciting. Now that is something to think about. So as we wrap up this deep dive, here's what I want to leave you with. With one small act of love you can bring back this week, how can you rediscover a little bit of that honeymoon magic in your relationship today? Remember, building a happier, more fulfilling relationship. It starts with a single step, and sometimes those tiny steps, those are the ones that lead to the biggest changes. 